Hi guys and welcome to another Divi WordPress theme tutorial. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignTechTips.com. Well, we're going to look at the Divi new Divi 4 theme in this series of videos. We're going to go from uh, download and install to taking a look around and we'll build a, a website with it. In this first video we're just going to download and install and take a look around. So I've got a new WordPress site here. It's just a basic WordPress site with nothing installed on it. If we go to our dashboard, here's a regular dashboard. Uh, if we look at the appearance and themes, I think it's got the default 2019 theme. So I want to install the Divi 4 theme, so I'm going to go to Elegant Themes. I'm going to download the Divi theme. If you want to take the Divi theme for a test run, you can do so from my affiliate link below this video. There it is downloaded right there. So let's go to add new. And I'm going to click on upload theme. And I'm simply going to drag the download just next to the choose file bar there. So it's got a one in parentheses there because I've already got it downloaded obviously. It says the theme is installed successfully. I'm going to go ahead and activate it and there it is. It's telling me there's a new version of available which surprises me because I've just downloaded it from their site so I'm going to go ahead and update now so we've got the latest version. Great so it's updated now. I've got to activate this theme or at least register it. Let's go down there it is it's popped up as Divi there. I want to go to the theme options I'm going to go to updates, put in my username and API key here. Save the changes. And there we had a little check mark telling us it's all good. So we've got the latest version of Divi. Let's just check what version it actually is if we go back to themes click on the 4.0.4 .4. so that's obviously the most up-to-date one I'm gonna go ahead and delete this anything that you don't need on a WordPress site it's a good idea to get rid of so let's take a look around you've got your regular WordPress dashboard post media pages comments projects uh, appearance themes customizer widgets background theme editor your plugins. Don't think we've got any plugins. Maybe the two generic ones that they usually install. Yep, a Kismet and Hello Dolly. Users, tools, settings. But if we go into Divi, I'm just going to click on Divi right here. We've got our theme options. General. This is where we can set our logo. Write any custom code. And select various options like a back to the top button we can put in our uh, Facebook Twitter and Google if you want to use the default ones but we can make custom ones quite easily you can set your display home link and drop down menus from the navigation the builder enable Divi builder on post types we've got it enabled on everything the Divi builder is wonderful you can actually download it as a standalone builder and use it with other themes too you can choose which items to show on posts here in the layout, single page layout, general settings. You can insert advertising banners here if you want to. SEO, you can add a bit of custom title, meta descriptions and keywords. Keywords are great and they're not as effective as they used to be but a good description and a home page custom title is great if you use uh, good keywords for your content. Integration. You can add code to the header, body code, you know, Google Google uh, integration and things like that. This is a great, great place to put it. Add code to the head of your blog or your website. Add code to the body. Top of posts and bottom of posts. 
This is great for putting in bits of code for advertising purposes or tracking purposes or analytics purposes. Of course, we were in the updates just now. This is where you register your Divi theme, get all the latest updates. If we go down one, we've got the theme builder. This is the big new feature in Divi 4. If I just click on that. The Divi theme builder is absolutely awesome. This, this new feature enables you to create global headers, global footers, and actually global sections for body. You can do different things for different pages. Click on it, you can assign things to any pages, posts, archive pages. If you've got WooCommerce installed, you can do it with products as well. Just gonna close that out. If you wanna learn more, I've got a whole series of videos describing how to build these. I'll put the link below this video here. Now the theme customizer, if we move on down, this is where you can set all your general styles for the site. Site identity, layout set settings, typography, background images. Header and navigation, this is where you can tweak your header format up here. Primary and secondary menu bars, we'll go through all this when we start to build. Footer, buttons, blog, mobile styles, color schemes, menus, widgets, home page settings, and additional CSS. This is also in the Divi options down there if you want to add any custom CSS. If you follow my videos, you know I love adding custom CSS to just personalize the site and get some great effects. Divi is actually getting so good now, a lot of the time I don't need to actually add any additional CSS, but that's where you do it, and I'm sure we'll be using a bit of that. So if we go back out of here, the role editor. This is where if you've got multiple users on your site, you can change the things that they can actually do. Whether they're admin, editor, author or contri contributor, you can disable or enable certain features theme options in the builder interface, in the library settings, in the general settings. And you can actually go right into the modules and disable and enable modules for various different people as well. It's kind of handy if you've got a lot of people using your site and you want to limit what they can do for damage control. Divi library, if we move on down to the next one. This is where if you save pages, posts, modules, custom modules, this is where they will appear and you can import and export them, export them from here and import them into other sites. Or you can download th themes and modules from the Divi site itself and import them into here so they are available in your library. Support Center. It'll show you if you've got any errors and you can let Elegant themes actually remote in if you enable this. And there's some Divi documentation help here if you need it. And some of this is really useful. And I would suggest just taking a look through. Some of it may pertain to you, some of it may not, but it's there if you need it. So there we have it. There's a quick overview of the Divi theme here. If we go to the home page, not a lot will have changed, I doubt it, but we'll probably have the, the Divi logo up there now. There it is. Looks very bland. In the next videos, we'll start customizing and start building a site. So there you have it. There's a quick overview of the new Divi 4 theme with the awesome Divi theme builder. I hope you've enjoyed that and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, share, comment and subscribe. If you're interested in web development, take a look down below. We've got some great free web development courses down there as well as some premium courses with some huge discounts for our YouTube subscribers. So do check it out. Once again, this has been Jamie with System22 and webdesignandtechtips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.